Welcome to the Core Women Podcast, the place for women entrepreneurs, authors, and self-starters looking to build community and gain valuable insights through expert interviews with women at the top of their game. Join your host, podcaster, producer, expert coach, entrepreneur, and author, Dr. Summer Watson, as she aims to inspire and empower you through these candid conversations. Lean in and embrace the journey. It's time to start the show. Here's your host, Dr. Summer Watson. Today on the show, I would like to welcome Colleen Biggs, who is a 22-year business strategist who empowers business leaders to expand their influence through peak performance habits to attract the right clients and drive more profits. She has launched over 340 businesses, is a keynote speaker, author of seven number one international bestsellers, with the latest being Step Into the Spotlight to Expand Your Influence. She's the CEO and founder of Leap Community and was awarded the most inspirational leader in business and entrepreneur of the year in 2023. I am excited to have you here on the show, Colleen, and welcome. (laughs) Hey, Summer. (laughs) I'm so glad to be here. I know as a podcast host myself, it's so fun to bring on other people onto my show and have conversations with them and get to know them better. And I just love it. So this is always a fun time when I get to be a guest on somebody else's show. Isn't that fun? I mean, I feel the same way because we're always interviewing people and we're the interviewer. So when you can be the interviewee, it's so nice. So we're going to jump right into this because we have so much to talk about. But before we jump into your professional aspects of your life, if you could describe your journey in one word to this point, what would that word be and why? (laughs) Wow, my life has been insane. And the more that I go through journeys to really discover my childhood and some things that I have forgotten about and where I've been in my life, I think that number one word has to be resilience. I've had a lot thrown at me throughout my life from the time I was born into a very unstable family to physical abuse, sexual abuse. And it spans from childhood through marriages. And, you know, I look at myself back then and I don't even recognize the shell of that person anymore because I'm so much more confident in who I am today and my abilities and what I believe in and where my core values are anchored. I felt like I was just this young lost puppy or something that really wasn't ever guided. So the importance of mentors and people on the journey with us is so crucial. But I didn't realize that till later in my life. And now I'm 52. So I feel like, okay, well, the second half of my life is not going to be like the first half of my life. I celebrate having children and all of that. And I'm so thankful for my time in corporate America to learn from some of the best on leadership and how to be a good leader I'm very thankful for everything that's happened, but there's a few things I could probably do without. (laughs) (laughs) I like your authenticity and your honesty. Thank you so much for sharing and disclosing some of the things that you went through growing up. I do have some questions that I set out usually, but I want to go off script a little bit here. What was the aha moment or the moment of reflection where you knew that you wanted things to change in your life? You had gone through a lot of experiences. I know a lot of people say traumatic experiences, but sometimes I don't want to objectify that person and say traumatic, and you can define it how you want. But what was that turning point for you where you said, I want things to look different, to be different, to Mm -hmm. feel different. Was it mentorship? Was it something inside you? I want people to know that if you're out there and you've been through some of those same things as Colleen and myself have been through, what was that point for you? How did you get through that? I know the exact moment and what car I was driving and exactly what my daughter looked like at that age. So my daughter was 14 years old and I was dropping her off at cheer. She was a competitive cheerleader. And at the time I had one son and one daughter. And I say at the time because I did get married after that and bring in five more children, which are like my own. 
that was, you know, 17 years ago. I remember I was 36 years old. I think I was 36, somewhere around there. I just remember looking at my daughter saying, I can't do this anymore. And I was dating somebody, but we had been living together. So my kids were in the house and he would get violent when he drank. And there were some things that weren't okay anymore. My daughter had to step in the middle of us one time. And that changed everything. It's like, it's so funny because we put a lot of stuff on ourselves, say, I can deal with anything. But when my kid is involved, now that's a whole different ballgame. Why would we allow ourselves to be abused, but then we'll protect our children? It's the weirdest thing to me that it's okay for it to happen to us, but we would never let it happen to a friend or another person. I can't tell you how many times I've stepped in front of friends or protected them or whatever, but It's like I didn't feel my worth was high enough to do that for myself. And I remember looking at her saying, I'm just not happy. And I don't know why I was telling my 14-year-old this, but I said, I'm not happy. And I'm just so tired. I'm really sorry about what happened last night. It was not my fault. I had nothing to do with what happened. It was whatever he did, you know, happened. And she just looked at me. And I remember her saying these words. It's weird that she would say this because she told me to grow some cojones pretty much and just leave. It's exactly what she said to me. And I thought, well, she's telling me to act like a man, obviously, (laughs) and get the strength to just leave. And in that moment, all I needed was that. It was like permission, I guess. Maybe I was worried that she would be upset that we were moving again, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think it was permission. And I, I just in that moment, I said, okay, we're leaving. And I had made the decision in my life that I'm done being told I'm a crappy mom from someone who doesn't have any kids. I'm done being told that I am all these things. I'm not, he was a very condescending individual. And I was like, I'm done. So I packed up my stuff. He was really angry. I moved out of our house. I got a house for me and the kids. And from that moment, I vowed I'm never going to be anything I'm not. I'm never going to do anything I don't want to do. I'm going to be the best mom because that's what I know I am. And I love my kids. And we're going to do it the way we want to do it from this point forward. I don't care what anyone else says. Mm -hmm. And that was really kind of the moment for me that changed everything in my life because the way I acted in corporate America the way I stepped up to get mentors, the way that I did everything, negotiated a car, you name it. Anything I did from that point forward and when I met my now husband, I said to him the very first thing was, I'm not going to sacrifice who I am for anybody anymore. So you need to know exactly who I am today is who I am. This isn't like scratching the surface on Colleen Biggs. Like This is me and I'm going to be this person forever. So if this isn't the person you love, I'm not looking to be changed. I'm not looking to change you. I've been through all that crap. I'm not anymore. And he said to me, that's exactly where I'm at in my life. And I need to be me. And I've worked hard on figuring out who I am and what I love. And we just became this great partnership of a marriage that supports each other to fully develop into the person you are with zero judgment and unconditional love. And that's rare But it's what I needed and it was what he needed. And I think God just had to wait until the time we were both ready to say, this is what we want and we're ready to meet each other because we wouldn't have worked 10 years before that, 20 years before that, you know, we would have loved because our marriage is so strong and we have such a bond and a love to have gotten together, you know, when we were 20 getting married at the first time, that would have been great, but that's not who we were then. You know, we're strong today. So we all, I think, evolve over the years. And life is tough, man. You get thrown some major curveballs. And I've been thrown some pretty hard ones. But I love having a partner, you know, to be able to go through life with. And then I showed my children that I was stronger. And I think it was important for me to show my 14-year-old daughter then that I could stand up and be strong and have the strength of a female. And I didn't have to be a male to be strong and to lead my life the way I wanted to lead my life. That was big. That all is huge. And thank you so much for sharing that turning point, that point of something needs to change. And I love what you said. Isn't it funny how 
We will allow ourselves to be in certain positions, but won't allow others to be there. And we want to save them. We want to rescue them. But sometimes we keep ourselves in that one state of being. And we're like, what is going on here? What is the confusion? And I think it's that point of clarity. And you had it and you changed it and you started thriving instead of just surviving with this person that didn't at all deserve you. (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) at all. And so it's like, you knew and figured that out. And it takes a while sometimes. And I'm glad that you went forward. And now here you are, you're doing amazing things in your personal and professional life. Let's do a little bit of a shift. And I want to ask you a question about some of your professional developments. Can you discuss a recent trend or development in the business world that has influenced your strategic thinking? It's not really a trend, but I will tell you from my thinking in 2018 and 19, when I left corporate America, I was planning on it. They knew about it. And then there was a transition stage because of all my responsibilities to get them to somebody else before I left. You know, everything before the pandemic, it would seem like bigger was better. I don't know what was happening, but phones were getting bigger. Vehicles were getting bigger. Tires on vehicles were getting bigger. Houses (laughs) were getting bigger. Everything was getting bigger. Like you spent more money and like the bigger your life. And it seemed like social media was prestigious. And I felt that way. And so I flew around a lot in 2019 thinking, even though I had done telecommunications and Zoom for a few years with my clients and used go to meeting and whatever it was, I had been working with clients across the United States for. 20 years up to that point. And I was in person with them every once in a while, but weekly we could just be on the phone. And then I would fly all over to go do these luncheons for women because that was that whole thing. Women are surviving and I want them to thrive. And that kind of was a big shift for me. And then when the pandemic hit and everyone got locked down, I think the thinking that changed for me was I always felt business had to be hard Mm -hmm. prior to that. So I was raised that way. I was taught by men, really honestly, that you got to work hard. The work hard thing is like, you've got to put so much effort into things. It can't ever be easy. And if it is easy, then you're not doing enough. There was this badge of honor. I used to wear a badge of survival. I wore a badge of working hard and I would even have women that were in my organization that would burn the candle from both ends. And that was like a badge of honor. And I was like, this is ridiculous. I don't want to be old and trying to work and feel like my whole life is work and I don't have time for family. And so I continued to do that when I built my business, I was working hard and making it hard and everything was hard and something shifted in me during the pandemic that I was like, this is easy. It does not have to be hard. I've been making it hard and creating barriers and creating hurdles and making it difficult. And I need to make everything in my life easy. And that was when I had decided, like, I'm not cleaning my house anymore. I'm going to get someone to clean it. Because honestly, it's hard. It takes me a lot of hours. I don't feel like doing anymore because all my kids grew up and they were all my little cleaners. And now they're all gone, (laughs) you know. And when you become an empty nester, you're like, I have to do everything by myself. And both my husband and I equally would split chores. And it was like, I don't want to clean anymore. I want to get someone to clean my house. My husband said, I don't really feel like doing the landscaping anymore. Like he loved landscaping. But now he was like. It's just a chore and I'd rather build my business. So we really got into relationships and building businesses and then our family started expanding. So now we have seven kids because we combined our kids and we've got, you know, 10 year olds at home. So we've got younger ones, you know, up to teenagers and a little bit older. And so now they're getting married and graduating high school, going to college. And we have grandbabies coming. And as our lives continued, it was like my thinking changed completely. And so has his where... We want to build a legacy so that we and the way we scale that is backing ourselves out of the businesses to build that. And we want to do that so that we can spend all the time that we know both of us missed with our kids growing Mm. up. And I think there's this grandparent guilt where you feel like, oh, I'm kind of guilty because I wasn't the best parent. Well, you're never the best parent because you have no idea what you're doing the first time around. But then when your kids are having kids, you're like, 
I'm so much wiser now and I can see it from a different perspective. And so we want to spend more time with our grandkids and they all live very close to us. And we want to have build more memories, not build more businesses. And we have four right now. We are building and our goal for this next business we're building is to build it to exit in 10 years so that we can have not only the value of what we built the business and have that as a legacy for our kids, but we're in an age where Kids don't want to take over your businesses anymore. Even though we work with our kids in our businesses, many of them, they don't. They don't love it like you do. And we're old fashioned in that way where I would give my right arm, my left leg for a corporation. And today it's not like that anymore. So my strategic thinking has changed. And I even work with my clients on this. I say, put a little sticky that says, is this hard? Are you making this harder? Is this easy? And I think it's just a big thing to contemplate in our lives. Do we make things hard? Or could they really be easy? That is a strategic decision Mm -hmm. and a shift for you. I think that is a huge trend change too. People are seeing, and especially our younger generations are seeing that it doesn't necessarily have to be hard. And that is something that I also grew up like, get in there. If you're not doing it hard enough, you're not doing it good enough. We grew up with movies like Baby Boom and Working Girl. And if you're not trying to figure out a way or asking for a place at the table, you can make your own place at the table. You Mm -hmm. can create your own table. The mentality doesn't have to be, oh, it's got to be hard to be better. And sometimes it's about, what strategically we can do to make it easier so that we can enjoy life and create some balance in our life and be able to thrive more. Mm -hmm. So tell us more about your business Leap Community and how folks can learn more about it. Yeah, you know, I created that community coming straight out of corporate America because the business owners that I launched business with for 20 years they all created community. And it was that community that really was the icing on the cake that helped them thrive in community and share best practices and the things that they do. It was like, a, you know, mini mastermind every time they got together. And I was like, I need this for females that own businesses or in business development to really be able to come together to say like, you know what it's like to be me because you're building a business too. So we have things in common and we're going to have the same struggles. And if I'm a little further along than you, why not share that information with you so it's a little bit easier for you? And I feel like women in corporate were so catty and they always wanted to shoot you in the back with arrows. And then I meet these female entrepreneurs and I don't know if it's just because I attract these women, which I think part of it is, but I am so loving and so giving and so free with advice. And I could never understand why women treated me the way they did in corporate America. They didn't like it because I was smart and I was a go-getter and, you know, I climbed the corporate ladder and they just want to knock you off. And you're like, wait, wait, why don't we just do this together? Well, women and entrepreneurs, they want to do it together. So I wanted a community where to me, the two business rules that only exist in any business that I've been taught and is, I think is, you know, it's just been embedded in me, my DNA forever, which is you got to tell everybody about you, anything you're doing, right? You got to tell everybody about you and you have to build long lasting relationships. So if we're not doing those two things in our businesses, we're really not going to succeed. And that's easy, by the way, building long lasting relationships and telling everybody about you can be easy and it can be fun. So I created a fun community where women can tell everyone about them because I interview them on podcasts. We give them podcasts that are looking for interviewers every week. We give them stages and tell them who's looking for guests and speakers. They do blogs. They promote their events through our newsletter. There's so much that we do to get the visibility of our members out there so that they can, number one, tell everyone about them. And then building the long lasting relationships happens when we meet up at networking events in the community online, everything's online. I used to do some things in person. And then I just decided this is an online community because women are out of Canada. They're out of everywhere in the United States that are part of this community. They love to come together to network. 
They love to come together to mastermind, which we do once a month. And they love to just teach workshops within the community and other women get to learn from them for free. So I think it's an amazing community that I put together organically for women to work with each other, share best practices with each other. I never created it as a sales funnel for me. I created it as a community to exist. So women that are maybe five years further along in business, they can be hired from someone who is a startup in that community because that's the perfect person for them to work with. I feel like we're attracted to certain people for our personality. So it's not like a BNI where it's like, nope, only one real estate agent. Nope. Only one mortgage broker. I don't do that. I mean, several business coaches, there's attorneys, there's ladies that work in health. It's ladies just really doing everything. And then I kind of off of that launch these in-person events that is really hosted by the Leap community. And they're called Empower and Elevate conferences. I do them twice a year in Arizona. And those have grown to over 140 ladies coming to a conference twice a year for them to be able to network with each other, be a speaker or be a panelist or have a table in the room where they can promote themselves. So I love bringing women together for them to be able to grow from each other, get the empowerment they need from another person, the knowledge, the wisdom, the gap of resources they may not have. And I really challenge women to ask for what they want in a room like that. I love that. You have developed so much. You also have seven number one international best-selling books, with the most recent one being Step Into the Spotlight to Expand Your Influence. Tell us more about this book and maybe a key aspect of the book that you'd like readers to walk away with. Yeah, I'm going to laugh because, you know, when you become an entrepreneur, everyone's like, you need to write a book. So, okay, I just did a whole bunch of books. And then I was like, okay, I'm kind of burnt out on the book thing for a while. So I haven't done one in a while. The step into the spotlight to expand your influence to attract the right clients is the full title of the book. I wrote it specifically because I believe that's the number one rule is you've got to be in the spotlight. You have to tell everybody about you and women seem like it's selfish or they're shy or they don't want to get out there. And it's like, if you don't tell everybody what you do, then they don't know who you are. And if you don't show up authentically, meaning drop the crap, drop the mask, drop all the, I think I need to be this way because that person might judge me. Whatever they're thinking about you is their own problem. It has nothing to do with you. It's their own stuff. And I really have learned through therapy and all the things that I've done that I am free to show up as myself. It feels light. It feels good. It feels right. And so I show up as myself everywhere without apology. And that attracts the right type of people that want to work with me. So someone will reach out to me and say, you know, I really love your take on this. I love how forward you are and how you don't sugarcoat anything. And I need someone like that in my life. I'd love to have you work with me as a business consultant. And then other people are like, oh, her energy is way too big for me. And I'm like, and that's good because I don't want that person in my sphere if I'm not right for them. I need them to find their right tribe and their right person so they can get the help they need to be guided through this process of launching, scaling, whatever it is that they're doing for their business, they need the right person next to them. So that whole attracting thing is just about showing up everywhere exactly who you are and the right people will just connect with you. You'll just bring them towards you. I fully, fully agree with that. And I love that message. Show up authentically. Do not sugarcoat it. Show up authentically because you would be amazed how that attracts people to you. Because guess what? They want to share an experience with you. And if you've had an experience and you talk about that experience, you'd be amazed how many people are like, I want to know you. Mm -hmm. I want to know more about you. And that's what this podcast is about. We first start with the personal aspects of your journey. And then we go into the professional aspects of your journey, because I feel like people lean in when they get to know more about you, Colleen Biggs. So we have covered so much from your perspective on business, to your personal life, to your book, to Leap Community. As we come to the close of the interview, my last question is, if you were to give the listeners one tip about how to expand their influence through peak performance habits, what would that one tip be? (laughs) 
I thought I was going to say leadership because that is a huge piece to be in a peak performer. But the other habit of a peak or a high performer is confidence. That's the number one thing out there that I see that women lack. It's the confidence, the confidence to go up and talk to someone, the confidence to show up exactly with what they wanted to wear, not what would someone else told them they should wear, the confidence to choose to go or not or leave. That's the other thing. If you show up somewhere and you don't like the energy in the room, leave. It doesn't matter what anyone else thinks. You're wasting your time. So I really feel like confidence is the number one thing. And when we gain that, we're unstoppable, absolutely unbreakable at that point. And we are then giving other people around us because of the way we show up permission to be that way too. It's amazing how much other people will emulate you when they're around you and feel your energy and they'll automatically feel like, oh, she's giving me permission to step up and be confident too. I want to do that. I want to be like that. Absolutely. I think it's awesome. I'm here standing and cheering for you <laughs> and everything that you're saying, I'm like snapping my fingers. I'm going, yeah, <laughs> all right. Where are my pom-poms? So anyway, I absolutely. So funny agree. you say that because <laughs> I have pom-poms on the table at my Empower and Elevate conferences. That's part of our clapping during the day. It's I so much it. fun. It's so much I fun. love it. Yeah. That is awesome. Thank you, Colleen, for joining me on the Core Women podcast today. It is so great, Summer. You're an amazing person, and I really appreciate you taking the time to get to know me and sharing my story with your listeners. It's been an absolute pleasure. You can follow Colleen Biggs on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram, and at ColleenBiggs.net. Thank you for joining us on the Core Women Podcast with Dr. Summer Watson. We're so glad you're here and would love to connect more with you. Find us on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube at Core Women and on Twitter at Core Women One. For more about Core Women and Dr. Watson, visit corewomen.com. Want more support and resources for amazing women like you? Great! Join Dr. Watson and Jen Fontanilla at the Life, Love, and Money Collective, a Core Women production that aids in understanding the key traits that might be getting in the way of living a life that you are absolutely passionate about. Connect with Summer and Jen and find out more at thelifeloveandmoney.com.